Hi everybody, I'm Don Dixon, and I want to welcome you back to our last discussion on the right stuff. We're running our master class over the last few weeks on having all of the right gear. What gear do we need to do the best job out there on the water? And in some areas, there's been some conflict as to what might be best or what might be thought to be best by some other people and so on and so forth. And I just always, I'm telling you what I know, what my experience is, what I learned from Buck, and what the heck I'm using when I'm out there on the water. And we're finishing up today by talking about some of the tools that we use that aren't too, too often talked about, uh, which are very important. And we touched a little bit in our discussion the last time on depth sounders, we talked a little bit about uh, contour maps. And I want to be a little more specific about the contour maps and how they can help us in our fishing. We spent most all of our time traveling around the country, fishing different lakes, always with a purpose. And the purpose was uh, mainly uh, to deliver our educational message. And back in the early days, the only way to do that was through live lecture. And when I first started with Buck, he actually made me some audio tapes, here, little cassette tapes. <laughs> and when I think back on it, it kind of makes me laugh because he said, if you're going to take over and do my lectures for me, and it's going to be Buck Perry's structure fishing workshop, it's going to have my name on it. He said, you have to be 100% right. And he said, you won't ever really get good at it until you've experienced a bunch of stuff. But in the meantime, he said, I'm going to put some tapes, little tapes together for you that you can study from time to time. So you'll be able to learn how to give a lecture, like a one night lecture. So he started making me these little cassette tapes. And it's funny because I listen to them all of the time. And you know, Buck from North Carolina, he talked just like that. And he'd say, deep water is the home of the fish. Once or twice, we're saved by the fact that once or twice on a normal fishing day, they won't stay there all the time. They'll move towards the shallows. And this movement is not in a haphazard fashion, but it's along well-defined routes. Routes which we refer to as structure. <laughs> well, I used to stay up late at night, midnight, two in the morning, three in the morning. I'm listening to my tapes. And pretty soon, I'm delivering lectures all over the country. And one time I went to Pittsburgh and did a lecture in Pittsburgh, fishing the Allegheny River and did a lecture in Pittsburgh. I had a couple hundred guys there, a lot of my old friends where I grew up there. And I started my lecture. And I said, first thing you have to understand is that deep water is the home of the fish. And afterwards, when I met my friends for a couple of beers, I'm not kidding you, they just ridiculed me up and down. They said, since when did you start talking like you're from North Carolina? And I started thinking, I do? Really? I didn't realize that as I listened to those tapes over and over and over and over, I was developing this southern accent. <laughs> and my Pittsburgh guys about ran me out of town because of it. But at any rate, that's just a little side story I thought I'd share with you. But as we were doing this promotional fishing all over, the only way we could talk to the fishermen was through live lecture. So everything depended on how many people showed up. People can't react to, they can't get good, they can't learn anything if they're not there. So in order to get them there, we had to do all of this fishing on their lake. Because without the fish, and in the early days we kept stringers of fish, I always kept stringers, legal, but kept stringers to show that we're not talking about catching one fish, we're talking about catching the school of fish. What I'm going to teach you is going to show you how to, you can go out and catch the school of fish nearly every time you go fishing. Well, if I hadn't caught a school of fish on their lake, they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to believe me. I'm just another guy talking. So that's the reason we had to do all of this fishing. And it was that way for 10 years until we developed and started doing the underwater uh, training schools and still until uh, uh, a videotape came along, which gave us another opportunity to teach people. Uh, we were doing everything live lecture and it all 
the success of those lectures depended on what I was able to do out there on the lake, on their lake. So one of the biggest aids that I had, one of the most important tools that I had to do that job was the contour map. Now, as I mentioned last time we talked, there's a new kid on the block. It's called Navionics. <laughs> you can get a contour map of every lake in the United States of any consequence through all of the modern technology. You can get it for $14.99. You got the whole country. Now, doing what I was doing back in the day, that would have been like, that would have been almost as important as my depth sounder. That's how important that would have been. Eliminate all the water of this particular lake I'm fishing today, eliminate all that water and arrive at two or three spots and find a fish almost instantly, it would have been terrific. But most of the time, I had to search and search and search to try to find a contour map of the lake that I had to fish in order to have my success at the lecture. And so as I look at the contour map situation today, Navionics, there's other, by the way, there's other, uh, uh, I think Garmin has a little different uh, outfit that has the same thing. They're, they're showing the contour maps and they're available. You can, you know, touch screen. There it is. You know, terrific. But if I'm going to suggest this, everybody says, well, my unit, I can, it has built in Navionics. Well, great. How many lakes do you fish? You know, you traveling around the country, fishing different lakes all the time, or traveling around your state, fishing all kind of different water. It's something you should probably have. And, and actually, for $15, it wouldn't mind just having it for two or three lakes. But most people aren't fishing hundreds of lakes. Most people today, most fishermen today, out of the 60 million that are out there that went fishing last year, the greatest majority fishes close to home. They don't leave in their area. Buck used to say, the average fisherman lives in a really small fishing world. It's normally one lake, maybe two lakes, maybe two lakes and a little river, but it's a small fishing world. So how important is Navionics to you? You can decide, but I'm going to talk about how important a contour map is to someone like me who was fortunate enough to learn from Buck how to actually read one. And I'm going to be talking more about reading contour maps when I get into our discussion, a master class on mapping and interpretation. I'm going to talk more detail about it. Uh, but for now, let me just say, a contour map, whether you've seen it touch screen on your depth sounder, whether you're seeing it on your iPad, if you're calling it up on your phone the day that you're going fishing, because you have that app, you have that Navionics app, or one like it, uh, it can eliminate a lot of unproductive water for you in a very short time, in, in a matter of minutes. And give you the idea when you go out there where the heck you want to go and, and, and you can drive right to it. It eliminates unproductive areas and puts you in areas of structure if you know how to read it. So, it would be obvious that that's an important tool in our fishing, having a contour map. And because it used to be so difficult to find, uh, I kept begging guys, listen, do yourself a favor, go find a contour map of your lake or the lake you're going to go fish. It's worth it. But today, all they got to do is touch the screen and there it is. It's terrific. It's a terrific aid that you have in your fishing today. Now, with that being said, I want to clear up for a minute exactly what a contour map is. Now, this may seem like it's sort of 101, you know, first grade stuff, but some people start acting like a contour map is a detailed structure map. It is not. It's simply a bunch of contour lines that are drawn on a map by a map maker. It's not a detailed fishing map. It's not a detailed structure map. It's not going to tell us the exact spot where the fish are. It's only going to allow us to get to an area where there's structure. Now, having the ability to read a contour map, and I'm going to be dealing with this in mapping and interpretation. It's easy enough to see a point of land coming out in a deep water hole and so on and so forth, 
uh, you can easily see areas of structure, but does that give you the actual detail from a fishing standpoint? No, it does not. So detail mapping a structure is different than looking at it, even if you're looking at it 3D, 4K, you know, you've got this picture on this $5,000 TV screen uh, sonar unit. It doesn't give you the details that you need in order to fish it properly. In order to be able to point your finger in the water like Buck did, say there's the fish, or there's the fish. Uh, find that contact point. It doesn't do that for you. A, a contour map is simply a bunch of contour lines on a, on a map uh, that's drawn by a map maker. In this case, we now have the ability to have these contour maps uh, of every, every uh, lake in the country. For $14.99 and a push screen, there it is. And it's great. You can, you can take that contour map and eliminate most of the water and circle the spots, where what we call fishing water, the spots where you're going to spend your time. There might be three or four key structures or five or six key structures, whatever it is. You can determine that from a contour map. But that contour map, even with the best picture that you can get from a new sonar, is not going to point to the fish. It just won't do that. So when we get to our discussion on mapping and interpretation, what Buck Perry referred to as the number one separation point between the men and the boys, and we always make sure that we're not sexist here, <laughs> men and the boys are the women and the girls, the difference between the really good fisher person versus the person who just catches a few fish every now and then. The difference, the real difference, is their ability to map and interpret structure. And that's not by simply looking at one of the new sonar units. That won't do it. So we're going to have this further discussion, but it is important to have a contour map of the lakes you're fishing. Now, if you do travel around in the summer and fish quite a few lakes, man, you need to get you that app. Get that Navionics map and be able to study and I'm going to help you in our discussion with map and interpretation, how to read a contour map, how to really read it, and how to use it to your advantage. So that's a tool that we want to have, and, and it, today it's available in a way that I can, only, <laughs> I can only smile about, wish I had it back in the day. But I sure have it now. You can bet on that. All right. Now, that being said, there's a couple other things. Uh, I've got a picture here because I was teaching my grandson just the other day. We were out on a, on a new lake we hadn't been on. And I was teaching him about the importance of markers. I use markers a lot. And I used them uh, back in the day when I was promoting all the time. We were always fishing on the weekdays, not the weekends. Because the weekends were busy, a lot of boat traffic. But during the week, uh, there was hardly any uh, boat traffic that I had to worry about in the summer months. Uh, so I could feel free to throw a bunch of markers when I was mapping a structure or when I was fishing, like in Florida, fishing some one-sided bars. But in most all cases, because of our uh, knowledge of that deep water is the home of the fish, we're fishing out there in an area of the lake or the river in most all cases where there are no fishermen. So I can use markers uh, most all the time. And there's such an aid uh, in allowing us to be precise in our fishing. Uh, my older son was asking me the other day, how many markers do you normally carry? I said, about eight. I like to have eight markers in the boat. And when we were looking at that new lake the other day with a grandson, uh, I was teaching my little 10-year-old grandson the importance of markers. So he got a kick. He was throwing markers for us as we were doing a little mapping out there. Now, there are times when I just can't use markers. Uh, and one of the things is where you have a current. I was thinking about that the other day. Uh, I think it was a week or two ago when we were showing some, uh, I had that young man training on fishing with wire line and we're out there fishing in this river system where there's a 12 mile an hour current. And in most cases we're fishing where nobody else fishes. However, because of that current, it didn't allow me to use markers, but, uh, I knew the spot really well and I could get by without markers, but I was reminded of how funny it is that most of the time where we're fishing, nobody else is fishing. There we are, we're catching all these big walleye, and boats are buzzing by us <laughs> like, we're, like we're not there. 
and we weren't trying to hide anything. We're standing up netting big fish and they're just back and forth <laughs> traveling all over the place because they have no idea why we're fishing out there in 60 feet of water where there's current because they don't understand what now you and I understand. Deep water is a home of the fish. But most of the time you're able to use markers. I encourage you to use markers when you can. They'll help you be more precise in your presentation. It'll help you in your map and interpretation of a structure. It'll give you a better look of really what's down there. It'll help you see your structure better from a fishing standpoint. And it will also allow you to make better passes when you're especially when you're making trolling passes uh, it'll allow you to anchor down in the right spot and be cast into the spot where the fish are so use markers when you can it's a great tool so that covers contour maps covers markers i also advise carrying a net and i'm going to end with this story i was laughing with my wife about it because we have a mutual friend my wife is a musician most of you know that and this guy wrote a song some 35 years ago, something like that, maybe even 40 years ago now, called Doctor, Doctor, Give Me the News. And his name is Johnny Moon Martin, and he loved to fish. And he was a cool little guy, man. He had some hair that just went every which way, and he was fun to be around. He was a funny guy. And he was also fortunate enough to, he had a little band, and he'd written some music. And uh, Robert Palmer, who was a star back in the day, heard him do this song one day and he asked him if he could record it. Johnny said, sure, they made an agreement and he recorded that song and I still hear it. My wife and I heard it not, not about a month ago. We were in a restaurant and they start playing, Doctor, Doctor, <laughs> tell me the news. It's Johnny Moon Martin. But at any rate, he's a great guy, a great guy to be around. I went out and fished California with him a few times when he was living out there in Hollywood and then uh, he came to our summer school one year, and uh, he was a bass guy, never fished walleye. And he was in this boat when I did my training session with him. I did it in his boat. I forget what the reason for that was, but in his boat, he didn't have a net. Now, he had never fished walleye before. He was a bass guy. And he hooks this big old fish, and... It turned out, I think it was, he was either 10 or 11 pounds. This is a big old walleye. He hooked that fish. And I'm coaching him how to play that fish when he's reeling it in. And about the time he's getting in, I'm looking around for a net. I said, where the heck's your net? He said, oh, I didn't bring a net. He said, that's all right. He said, I'll get that fish in. I said, well, okay. I'll help you. Let me know what I could do. I was trying to control the boat. There was some current. And all of a sudden, I see him jump down to his knees, and he goes to lip his 10 pot walleye. <laughs> I said, Johnny, no, 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 no. You can't lip a walleye. They got teeth. Just like you can't lip a northern pike or a muskie. But he didn't know it. Never caught a walleye before. And the first one was a big one. I got a picture. I'm right here showing you. Johnny Moon Martin was first walleye that he tried to lip. <laughs> at any rate, if you're fishing waters that has walleye, northern pike, muskie, obviously you ought to carry a net even if you're fishing just largemouth bass water. I thumb at least a million bass in my life. I don't put them in a net. However, if you happen to hook a 15 pound bass or a 13 pound bass, a fish of a lifetime, it'd probably be a good idea if you had a net there, safe way to land your trophy fish of, of your life, you know. So I always carry a net in my boat, but I like the folding kind that I can kind of keep out of the way unless I need it and, I'm, and unless I'm fishing for the toothy species. Uh, all that being said, if you were listening real close, there's always some difference between what a manufacturer thinks is good and what I think is good and what Buck Perry thought was good. And we can go down through all of the tools that we talked about and see the differences. In the end, I want you to decide. It's your money, you're buying, so on and so forth, but I want to try to put some science behind it. What makes the best rod? What makes a good trolling rod? What's the best depth sonder? In fact, I meant to show you this the other day. Uh, but when I invented the last depth meter, uh, I met up with Buck and we went fishing to a different lake. And, and this was, you know, this was in the 90s. I'd been with Buck since the 70s. Here's a picture of Buck in his boat. He's in the same boat he was in the day I met him. I had just produced a new, new boat. I had my new boat, 
But I want you to look at this picture. You can see the depth sounder he was using. It was one of his little 0 to 50 meters. He's still using it. From till, till the day he died, he was still using that little depth meter. So there are some differences between what Buck says is the best and what Don Dixon now says is the best and what the manufacturers are trying to sell. And just finishing up uh, uh, another comment on the depth sounders. It's, it's one of those things right now, it's say almost like the same as boats. Who's got the fastest boat? They're talking now in terms of 72 mile an hour, mine's, well, mine's 75. You know, who's got the biggest truck? Who's got the prettiest this? Who's got the most expensive video TV screen that they have in their boat that they call a depth sounder? Nothing is really targeting what we need to do. What do we need to do to catch fish? That's the reason we're fishing. Manufacturers keep wanting to go that direction when we're trying to pull them back and say, this is what we need. So with all that being said, tools and controls. Tools, the control and fishing. We talked about depth and speed. What tools do we need to best do that job? I think I've given you a lineup of the best tools. And so from this point forward, you're going to be making a decision on what you're going to be fishing with. And I'm going to still fish with what I've been fishing with for years. And hopefully, together we're going to meet out there on the lake and catch a bunch of big fish. So, till the next time we uh, get together and talk, like us on Facebook if you would. And be sure to hit that little red button down there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be doing some on the water videos coming up here pretty soon. Some fresh stuff that uh, I'd like to share with you. I want you to not ever miss any one of the videos so subscribe if you would so that you're notified every time we come out with a new video so until the next time thanks for being with me today we'll see you the next time